Have you ever thought about joining a Kaggle competition but don't really know where to start? Well, you're in the right place. I'm Kaggle data scientist Rachel Tapman, and today I'm going to show you how to enter a competition. All right. To start off with, we're going to pick a competition, and I already know I want to enter the uh, Housing Prices Advanced Regression Techniques. So uh, before I join, I'm probably going to want to read through the rules, but I actually read through them earlier, and you can do that on your own. So I've accepted the rules for this competition, and I've joined the competition. Let's find a kernel to work off of. Um, so uh, let's see kernels that people have uh, recently run. So looking through here, oh look, here's an example submission. Rachel, is that you? Yeah, that's me. I, did, I made this earlier. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to click on this example submission here, um, and this is going to walk me through all of the steps I need in order to enter a Kaggle competition. So um, rather than just reading through it here, I'm actually going to copy and edit this kernel so I have my own uh, copy that I can work in. It's going to take just a second to uh, spin up. When you enter a competition, there's a couple of basic steps you need to do. First, you need to train your model. I'm doing all of this in Kaggle kernels, which means that our uh, code is going to be run on Kaggle rather than on my local computer. So uh, this competition, this kernel already has a lot of the information we need in it. So we are reading in some helpful libraries. This is using R. Um, you can also write a kernel in Python if you prefer. Loading in my data, and then I'm setting a seed for reproducibility. Uh, from here, I want to actually train my model. So it looks like this person, it's me, has already started training a very simple model. Um, we're doing a test train split for cross-validation so that I can check that my model's not overfitting. Uh, and then there's a little bit of pre-processing. We're taking the uh, training data. We're removing the column that we are trying to predict, sale price. Um, and then here we are converting strings to factors. And then we uh, are doing some label encoding. So this is just taking categorical factors like, um, I don't know, zoning <laughs> uh, and turning that into a number so that we can create a matrix. Uh, and from there, we can use our matrix as input to an XGBoost model. So let's train our model really quick. Uh, and if we look at the mean average error, which is what this competition is going to be graded on, uh, I can see that it looks like it's actually still going down um, as we continue to do lots of boosting rounds. So this is an XG boost model, and the number of rounds you train it for um, will affect how much complexity in the data you can model. Uh, and let's make sure that we're not overfitting by uh, running the same model on some of our held out data. So doing some cross validation. And it looks like the test error is actually um, smaller than the train error. So what I'm going to do is just increase the number of training rounds and see if that's still the case. All right. Yeah, and it looks like it is. So I think just by increasing the number of training rounds, I should get a better performance than this kernel originally had. So once we have trained our model, we can actually make our predictions. So our predictions here are going to be based on this test CSV, which if we look at our data set, we can see that the train CSV has 81 columns and the test CSV has 80 columns. That's because the test uh, data set has all of the features that you would need, but it does not have the feature that you're trying to predict. Um, so I don't know what the answers are for here. That's what I'm trying to guess. I will take these, uh, uh, this test data that doesn't have the um, uh, target column. I'm going to do the exact same pre-processing as I did before. Uh, and then I'm going to make some predictions using the model that I've trained up here to several more rounds than the original uh, submission. Uh, and then I am going to make predictions using this test data matrix. Uh, 
and I'm going to save it as a CSV. So what I'm saying here is I want a data frame with two columns. One column is called ID, and this has the ID information from the test data. And one column is called sale price, and this has my predictions from the submission prediction. And I know that those are the columns that I need, because if I look at the sample submission here, uh, I have the columns ID and sale price. Uh, and if I don't have the right column names here, when I go to submit my file, I will get an error. All right, once I have made my predictions, I'm going to write those predictions to a CSV file. So I'm saving a file out that has all of my submission information in it. From here, I need to commit my notebook. So committing uh, runs all of your code top to bottom, uh, and it creates uh, a stable version that you can refer back to later. So if I'm making multiple submissions, I can go back and I can look at the uh, committed version I used for that specific submission. Uh, and it looks like it's complete, so let's open the version. Uh, and here, if I scroll down, you can see at the bottom we have uh, output files. So I have one output file, submission CSV, that has uh, the predictions that I saved out in my kernel. And I'm going to submit this file to the competition. Uh, and it's submitted and uh, the submission is complete and it looks like my score is 0 0.16 uh, and if I jump to my position on the leaderboard I might have to wait a second for that to be uh, uh, that to be done uh, but you can see that I have my score I've made my submission and from here all I need to do is keep trying new things uh, and improving my model and then making new submissions uh, as I think the things that I did will improve my overall model. So that's it. That's all you need to do to enter a Kaggle competition. Obviously, I wrote some of the code uh, off screen, but you're also, of course, welcome to use uh, the kernels that people have made public for various uh, for a specific competition. Uh, and also check out the discussion and see what people are talking about about that particular competition. All right. Thanks so much for joining me. That's all you need to do to join a Kaggle competition. And now that you know how, I hope I see you on Kaggle. I'll see you then. Bye.